If you're a fan of the Transformers franchise, you should be looking forward to the action-packed Transformers Rise of the Beasts, which is set to hit theaters on June 9, 2023. The Transformers Rise of the Beasts is the seventh installment of the Transformers franchise and is based on the animated show Beast Wars. Watch this video as we discuss 10 things you need to know about Beast Wars. So, starting us off, the anticipated summer blockbuster movie Transformers Rise of the Beasts is set 300 years in the future. Number 10. Beast Wars elevated the format experimentation that Transformers Transformers has always been open to a new level. Although viewers were accustomed to their adventures occurring around the time they were broadcast, Beast Wars would go a long way into the future. The story takes place 300 years after the events of Optimus Prime and the other Transformers. It's crucial to remember that, although it draws inspiration from the television series, the live-action version of Rise of the Beasts will take place in the 1990s rather than in the future. The movie is set in 1994 in Brooklyn, New York, with trips to Peru. The ongoing conflict between the Autobots and Decepticons on Earth will be joined by the Maximals, Predacons, and Terracons, thanks to the rise of the beasts. The Maximals, Predacons, and Terracons are robots that can transform into robotic creatures. Number 9. Next up, The Beast Wars has a variety of spin-off comic book series, with several often canon series delighting fans worldwide. Transformers has had a particularly special place in the comic book industry. They are extremely creative, and Beast Wars produced several interesting spin-offs that the live-action adaptation may use as inspiration. The most current comic book to be released was in 2021, and both Dreamwave Productions and IDW Publishing published it. Although they have included a few fan favorites, show characters mostly support the series. The eighth fact on this list you should know is that a sequel show was commissioned after the Beast Wars ended. Beast Wars frequently appears on lists of the greatest Transformer series, especially among fans who remember viewing the series as kids. Regardless of one's perspective, it cannot be denied that it revitalized the series. The brand evolved so much that a follow-up show, Beast Machines Transformers, was created and aired in the late 1990s and early 2000s. It remains to be seen how that series will play into the film, although it did maintain several plot threads from the first Beast Wars. Between 1996 and 1999, Beast Wars had three seasons and 52 episodes. It was followed by Beast Machines, in which the Maximals returned to Cybertron to find it overrun by mindless vehicons ruled by Megatron. With only two seasons and 26 episodes, Beast Machines was ambitious, possibly too ambitious. According to former Hasbro executive Aaron Archer, the polarized reaction to Beast Machines doomed a second Beast Beast Wars sequel named TransTech. The seventh fact about Beast Wars that you should be aware of is that it revolutionized television animation. Many people need to be made aware, due to the current norm in TV animation, that Beast Wars was the first series in the Transformers franchise to use 3D animated techniques using computer technology. This CGI aesthetic would eventually be able to compete with the conventional 2D approach used in the franchise's earlier films. The animation in Beast Wars, which now seems somewhat old, earned an Emmy. The show made the most of its structure and the visual limits that could be pushed, but at the time, viewers needed help accepting the details that were shown completely. At number 6, The Beast Wars, which consists of two rival factions, are next on the list. The storylines of Transformers are often centered on the Decepticons and the Autobots, two warring factions typically commanded by Megatron and Optimus Prime. Two new groups, however, were included in the Transformers Beast Wars due to the change in the period. Here, they were divided between the predatory Predacons, known as the Bad Guys and also the Decepticon Descendants, and the Heroic Maximals. The Max Maximals were the Autobots, who were the good guys. Members of both factions crashed onto an unknown planet while engaged in combat, and Beast Wars shows how they struggled to survive in a strange environment while engaged in a struggle for racial supremacy. Due to this, the storyline of Beast Wars closely resembles that of earlier installments, and the live-action film will do the same. Fifth on the list is that the Beast Wars series was set in continuity with new protagonists. It's important to remember that the Transformers television series Beast Wars was based on the same universe as the earlier series, even with the changes, the timeline remained the same, so a complete relaunch didn't alienate long-term viewers. Nonetheless, it was a soft relaunch, with a new set of characters leading the story. Interestingly, the commander of the Predacons was also named Megatron, even though he was just a namesake and not the true original that viewers had come to dread. Then, we have the top four things you need to know about Beast Wars, with fourth being that Beast Wars had a popular and award-winning 52-episode run. Fourth, Beast Wars' visual extravaganza may have earned the program an Emmy, but the Transformers spin-off also proved popular with fans. The show ran for four seasons and 52 episodes because viewers adored the fresh spin on an old classic. The second show was produced because of its success, and Beast Wars had an 86% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Rise of the Beasts is now so anticipated because of the increased requests for a live-action remake due to the audience's sincere love for the film. Third on the list was the Beast Wars characters, who deviated from the traditional robotics vehicular creatures and were forced to take new forms, another area where Transformers permitted itself 
itself to take narrative chances is the concept of Beast Wars. Despite the excellent visual effects, the series didn't rely on its usual robotic animation because the protagonists transformed. The Transformers were instead compelled to adopt new forms, organic shapes modeled after creatures from different eras to adapt to a new world. As a result, when these aliens engaged in combat, it was frequently gorillas, cheetahs, and the occasional dinosaur engaged in the fight, rather than two robots. Coming in second on the list are Beast Wars-inspired video games. Beast Wars has spawned more than just comic book spin-offs and the anticipated film adaptation. Though they weren't nearly as good as the originals, the Transformers brand made sure that there were video games based on the concept for youngsters to enjoy at the time. The first was SCE Cambridge Studio and Hasbro Interactive's Beast Wars Transformers for the PC and PlayStation, which functioned as a third-person shooter with players assuming the roles of the Maximals or the Predacons. The second was the fighting game Transformers Beast Wars Transmetals, developed by Bay Area Multimedia, Wave DGE, and Locomotive for the PS1 and N64. Finally, first on the list is an all-star cast replacing the original voice actors. The voice cast continues the Transformers tradition of casting some of the most outstanding performers in the industry. Fans of animation will recognize names like Gary Chalk, David Kay, Scott McNeil, Ian James Corlett, Richard Newman, and Pauline Newstone. Rise of the Beasts, the show's live-action adaptation, takes a radically different approach. In June 2021, director Stephen Capel Jr. and producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura took part in a moderated panel to disclose the first information about the movie. They affirmed that Optimus Prime would remain the main protagonist. He's new to the Earth. He doesn't have the same relationship with the Earth as he had in the Bay movie and animated series, where he's already a guardian of the planet, as Di Bonaventura explained. This movie clarifies why he is connected to humanity and the Earth, which is an emotional journey. Peter Cullen, who has long voiced Optimus Prime in films and animated Transformers titles, returns to the role in Rise of the Beasts. Pete Davidson, a Saturday Night Live veteran and serial celebrity dater, plays Mirage, an Autobot that can transform into a Porsche 911. Capel described Mirage as the renegade in the bunch, and more of an outlaw, who will cause a little bit of difficulty with Optimus Prime and the rest of the team. He was termed anti-authority by Di Bonaventura. The main female Autobot, RC, voiced by Liza Koshi, can transform into a Ducati 916 motorbike. Capel explained that she's rough and fierce. She is Prime's devoted soldier, and sometimes the voice of reason. Cristo Fernandez as Wheeljack and John DiMaggio as Stratosphere and Transit round out the Autobots. Perlman plays Optimus Primal for Team Maximal. David Sobolov plays Rhinox, and Michelle Yeoh plays Air Razor. Scourge is played by Game of Thrones actor Peter Dinklage for the villains. Poe's Golden Globe winner Michaela J. Rodriguez will play Nightbird, Scourge's right hand, while Sobolov will return as Battle Trap, who can transform into a tow truck. Anthony Ramos from In the Heights and Dominique Fishback from Judas and the Black Messiah appear as humans. Ramos plays Noah Diaz, an ex-military Brooklynite with a knack for electronics in New York City. Elena Wallace, a museum artifact researcher, is played by Fishback. Toby Nwigwi has also been cast in the role of Reek. In terms of character sound, it doesn't appear there will be any continuity. There you have it, guys. Transformers Rise of the Beasts trailer just came out, and fans can spot some familiar faces. The Maximal Cheetor, Rhinox, Air Razor, and Optimus Primal himself. Are you hyped for the movie? Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to the channel to get updates on video drops like this.